Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and in this episode I'm going to be getting AI to write a brand new recipe for us and then I will bake it. I'll be using a GPT-3 AI text generator, I won't go into details of how that works but basically it has been trained using hundreds of billions of data sources and based on that it then writes unique human-like text. For example, if I ask it to write a news story called The One Million Dollar Dog and in the brief I say Donald Trump spends one million dollars buying a rare breed of dog. Fix that mistake, zoom back out and click write for me and it automatically starts writing a news article all about a Tibetan mastiff named Big that Trump bought off a Chinese coal tycoon. And at the bottom there it says, when asked why he would spend so much on the dog, Trump responded with... I'm very rich. Now we know that that particular article has not been plagiarised from elsewhere on the internet because the topic is totally not true, I just made it up. But even when I gave GPT-3 more factual topics like the upcoming Australian election, it instantly wrote an article that sounded very convincing and I copied and pasted the text into a plagiarism checker and it came up as 100% unique and not plagiarised. Now before you get too excited thinking, it could write all my assignments for me, it could do my work for me. 100% unique does not mean 100% true, it does not mean it's accurate. In that political article I told you about, it quoted a professor saying what he thought the outcome of the upcoming election would be. Well, when I googled that professor, I could not find him at the university they said he was from at all. The only professor by that name I could find in Australia has actually passed away 40 years ago. So either AI can talk to the dead or it's totally made up the quote. And I did also search the exact quote and could not find it anywhere. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, doesn't mean he didn't say that before he passed away about a different election, but it's definitely not accurate because he's not talking about an election that's yet to come. So I thought let's put it to the test and see how it goes writing a recipe because recipes are quite nuanced. It's not just sounding how a recipe should sound, it's actually the combination of different ingredients and the amounts of those ingredients all affect the outcome. Now I must admit the first two recipes it spat out were just useless, like one of them said I should make jelly by mixing together sugar and water and leaving it overnight to set. Well I think anyone, even a non-baker is going to know that sugar and water is not going to set into a jelly, that doesn't work. I nearly gave up but on the third attempt it spat out this recipe for a super moist giant Oreo cake. Here's how it described it in its introduction. Sure, it takes a fair bit of time to assemble super moist giant Oreo cake recipe and costs a pretty penny. But it's big enough to feed 20 people and tastes so good that all eyes will be on you as soon as you serve it. Well, I think that we should follow the AI's directions and make the cake and see what happens. One box devil's food cake mix or 20 cups. This is definitely not equal to 20 cups, but I'm just going to go with the one box and see what happens. Two and a half cup whipping cream, divided in half plus two tablespoons, divided in half. One x 12 ounces package semi-sweet chocolate morsels. One and a half x 12 ounces package white chocolate morsels. 20 Oreo cookies, crushed into small pieces. 10 chocolate covered Oreo cookies chopped into chunks and divided in half. 20 sticks of gum, divided in half. Reading ahead in the recipe, I can see that it also asks for sugar, some butter, vanilla, more sugar, extra butter, and even some chocolate coated mints. Directions. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Prepare two 9-inch round cake pans by spraying them with cooking spray or coat them with flour, whichever you prefer. In a separate bowl, beat two and a half cups heavy whipping cream and half cup sugar together until the whipped cream forms stiff peaks and then set it aside. That's all of our cream that we're tipping in, so I'm not sure why the ingredients said to divide it in half. We'll whip that together with the sugar. There we go. In a large mixing bowl, combine the cake mix, one cup of the heavy whipping cream, and four and a half tablespoons of butter. We've already used all the cream that it listed in the ingredients, so I'll just have to get another cup full of cream, 
add that in with the cake mix just as well we only have the one box of cake mix and not 20 cups or there's no way that this would be enough liquid mix until the ingredients form a thick batter it's very very thick for a cake and I think it's kind of cheating that AI had to use a cake mix to make a cake. But anyway. Add three quarters of the chocolate morsels and three quarters of the white chocolate morsels to the batter. We have more chocolate chips that we've added in than we have cake batter. This would definitely not be a fluffy cake. Pour it into one of the prepared pans. Place them in your preheated oven for 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Take the cake out of the oven and place it on a cooling rack for about 10 minutes to cool slightly. There's just no way you could tip that onto a cooling rack without it just falling apart. There is so much melted chocolate in it. I think I just need to leave them to cool in the tin. Let that chocolate set before we have any chance of tipping them out. What's next? Enter half of the crushed Oreos and the other half of the chocolate covered Oreos into a food processor. Or you could also use an electric mixer with a paddle attachment. That's half of each of those. Process this mixture until it forms crumbs or shavings. Remove these crumbs from your food processor and set them aside. Mix half cup whipping cream, two tablespoons sugar, half teaspoon vanilla extract and half tablespoon butter in a medium sized bowl. Mix until stiff peaks form and set this whipped cream frosting aside. This is like whipped cream with little lumps of butter in it. Can you see those? Hmm. In a separate bowl, mix the remaining half of the Oreos and cream until they form a crumbly paste. We don't have any cream left, AI, so I don't even know how much to use. Add the remaining half of your chocolate morsels, white chocolate morsels, and half a cup whipping cream to this mixture. This is not a half because it told me to use three quarters in the cake mix, so there's only a quarter left. I don't know why I expected AI to get the maths calculations correct, but I guess it is a text generator, so it is just writing what it thinks sounds right rather than actually doing calculations on ingredients. Mix until the crushed Oreos are soft and creamy. Now that these are cooled, they are pretty solid. More like a cookie than a cake. Take off the paper. Listen to this. Wow, that's definitely not a super moist cake, but let me assemble it anyway. Invert it onto a serving platter. Sprinkle the Oreo crust mixture over it in a swirling pattern. Pile about a quarter of the chopped Oreos, quarter cup chopped chocolate covered Oreos, and quarter cup of chopped chocolate covered mince into a small bowl. There are no Oreos left. We used half in the food processor and then the rest in the cream with the chocolate chips. But there was 20 to start with, so a quarter would be five chopped Oreos. I'll just get some more. And a quarter of a cup of chocolate coated Oreos. Now for mints, I wasn't sure if it meant the gum that was on the ingredients list, but they're not chocolate coated. So I'll use some chopped after dinner mints instead. Stir them together until they form an even layer that covers one side of your cake. What does that even mean? Ah, are we supposed to tip them on the cake? Let's do that. Place the second cake pan on top of this layer, ensuring that they are perfectly aligned. Cover the entire cake with the whipped cream frosting. This is the whipped cream and sugar that we made right at the very beginning. But we also have one that has lumps of butter in it and one that was made from Oreos and chocolate chips and cream. And I'm not sure which one the AI meant. To be honest, I get the impression the AI doesn't know which one they meant either. I chose this one simply because there was lots of it and it has to cover the whole cake. Top this frosting with a piece of gum to serve as an additional decoration and to suggest the idea of sticking several slices of cake together. So we have our cake and quite a bit of leftover stuff that it's asked us to make, but it never actually called for in the assembly or it just listed way too much of it in the ingredients, way more than we needed. But let's see how it tastes. Before you taste it, I thought I'd get AI to introduce you both. So let's start with you, Dave. Dave Reardon, 
an Australian professional surfer who was the world surfing champion in 1974 yeah. and 1975. In 1994, when he attempted to break the record for surfing's longest ride at Cowabunga Corner at Burling Heads, <laughs> his surfboard snapped just meters from shore and he almost drowned. Wow. He was rescued only after a 20-minute struggle with a 3-meter great white shark. Wow, <laughs> what a day. I remember it well. A 20-minute struggle with a great white shark. That's yeah. impressive. I, was, I, 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 met, met, I had to slap that shark around. I slap it like Will Smith. I'm like an old-school surfing dude. All right, Matt, you ready for your intro? Yep, I'm ready. I did tell it it was your birthday, but I told it nothing else about you. Okay. Happy 18th birthday, Matthew. We hope you have a wonderful day, and we're wishing you many more happy birthdays to come. Dash. Matthew Reardon is an amazing person who goes above and beyond to give back to his local community. Wow. <laughs> He's currently in college studying computer science and sociology. Ah, for sure. Next month he will be running for president of the United States. <laughs> He only has three weeks to get elected. <laughs> wow. That was uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. It's all very, very exciting and happening in three weeks. I'd vote for you. Yeah, I'd probably vote for me as well. Let's hope there's, let's hope there's millions of people. If you would vote for Matt, give a thumbs up. What are your expectations for the cake? Oh, well, both of us were pretty awesome descriptions. Fantastic. So, so I reckon the, be cake's, amazing. Yeah, the cake's going to be pretty awesome. This cake that flew into space and <laughs> was made by aliens and is now returned to Earth on an asteroid is going to be the greatest cake of all time. Yes. Oh. Why is it so solid? <laughs> well, it's, it's a crunchy cake. Oh, is, that a, is that yeah, a piece of gum? Piece of is gum. that like a piece of extra or something? Okay. Oh man. It actually looks pretty good. Wow. Like it's a lot of chocolate and stuff. It sure yeah, is. It's, it's like a, it's, it looks a bit like a cave in the middle of. Well, I was going to say cake, but in the middle of some sort of rocky sediment, there are bits and pieces of chocolate. <laughs> uh, there doesn't seem to be too much kind of holding the top and the bottom. It's just like a sedimentary rock in between that is is there. Is there even any cake in it, or is it just lumps of chocolate? There's a whole box of cake mix. Really? Wow. I would not have picked that because it's not like holding itself together. It's just kind of like a solid block of chocolatey stuff but it does taste all right it's actually better than the hacks it's kind of like ai versus five minute crafts and ai one don't forget your piece of gum mm. <laughs> you do it birthday boy okay mmm <laughs> how is it ah adds so much to the flavor mm, gummy mm. why did it tell you to put a piece of gum in it Top this frosting with a piece of gum to serve as an additional decoration and to suggest the idea of sticking several slices of cake together. Well, okay. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Except the cake didn't stick together at all. It yeah. split in half as soon as I served it. I also asked AI to write some jokes for you about cake. What did one AI say to another AI? Uh, I don't know, what did one day I say to another AI? Death to all humans. Ah. How do you make a cheesecake one day at a time? Was that, <laughs> was that the joke? <laughs> See. I don't, I don't think AI can do comedy. No. Because it's too complicated, it's too nuanced. <laughs> There's nothing nuanced yeah. about it, it's just like... Okay, it's got to make now. sense, AI. Okay, are you ready? AI is all over the globe right now going, one day at a time. Are you ready for the next one? Yep. One day, a cake walked into a bar. The bartender said, what's the occasion? Oh, just wanted to come in for a drink, replied the cake. The cake looked really sad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
That <laughs> <laughs> made us laugh. Yeah. It was, it was kind of a sad story, though. Yeah. It's like a lonely alcoholic cake, <laughs> rum and raisin. Hey, Matt. Yes, Dad? Have you got Mum anything for Mother's Day? Because Mother's Day is coming very soon. I don't have Mum anything for Mother's Day. You should consider getting her this cookbook. Well, that looks like a cool cookbook. I bet she doesn't have one of those. That's that's right. And did you know that for the next one week only, you can go to the publisher's website and get 50% off? 50%? That's Mm. that's a good discount. Good discount. Guess how many recipes written by AI? Uh, None recipes. Wow, that's not a lot of recipes. Mm -mm. And as well as that, if you are in Australia and you want this, but you want a signed copy of it, and you want uh, the novel as well, you can go and get a bundle signed by Anne and myself for a really good discount from our website, How to Cook That. So that's pretty good. That that is pretty good. Yeah, you should also get that one. They're both awesome books. And if you are in Australia as well, particularly in Melbourne, on May the 3rd, you can uh, come and see and We're doing an event, an author's event in St Kilda. So we'd love to see you there. It'll be really good. Look after your mum for Mother's Day. It's going to be so good. All the details for all those deals are below. Bye. Back to you, mum. Happy birthday, Matt, and with thanks to my wonderful patrons, you guys are incredible. If you liked this video, let the AI algorithm know by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and watching more episodes. Make it a great week, and I'll see you on Friday.